Well, let's, let's give Jesus a great hand. Come on. Let's praise him this morning. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. What a mighty God. God bless you. You may be seated. What a mighty God we serve. Jesus Christ is alive. And the healer's in the house. His name is Jesus. And with him, nothing is impossible. You know, this is the most significant year that I think has ever been, certainly in my lifetime. I believe 2018 is the best year ever, is the greatest year ever, is the most significant year ever for America, uh, for you, for your family, and for this church. And you are going to receive today in Jesus' name. It's going to be next to impossible for you not to receive. The atmosphere is so charged with healing anointing. Uh, Gwen and I are from Canada. Uh, we, um, we came down for a couple of weeks, and we came down uh, for a number of reasons to reconnect with our dear friends and our family here at Destiny, but primarily to listen to Pastor Greg preach. He's one of our favorites. And, uh, but here's, here's the problem. When we first met, uh, maybe three years ago, we had lunch together with Pastor Greg and Bobby, and afterwards God said, your assignment is to hold his hands up, to encourage him, and to serve him. And I said, well, what does that mean? He said, well, he'll tell you. Whatever he asks you to do, you do it. And so he comes to me. We came to hear him preach, as you did. And uh, he says, I want you to preach. And I couldn't say no, because I had said, yes, it's my assignment. So, so it is what it is today. And God's going to do great things. And I, I, I particularly am thankful to have this opportunity to say thank you. We came down last winter, uh, as smart Canadians do, and uh, our plan was to stay all winter. It didn't work out. Um, early November, I was rushed to the hospital, and uh, they told me there, here in Naples, that uh, if I hadn't have come in when I did, with had congestive heart failure and other things, my heart was functioning 10 to 15 percent, um, that I would have just fallen dead. And they said, we're going to do everything we can to keep you from dying. And uh, so that sounded a little serious. And um, uh, this June, I saw my, the chiropractor up in Ottawa, Heart Institute there. Pardon? What did I say? Oh, did I say, did I say chiropractor? Wow, that's a big word. <laughs> How many know the difference? <laughs> yeah, most of you do. Thank you. <laughs> Thank God I married up. I said chiropractor, did I? Wow, isn't that something? It's amazing under the anointing. I mean, you just uh, blame it. I saw the cardiologist, the heart doctor. I saw the heart doctor. And um, he said, you had four very serious conditions. And he went over them. He said, you don't have that one anymore. You don't have that one anymore. You don't have that one anymore. You don't have that anymore. He said, you're actually perfectly healthy. He said, your heart is great. He said... He said, there are, there are no restrictions. He said, um, no concerns, and uh, I never want to see you again. So we said goodbye, and we said hello, Naples. But thank you. Thank you for praying. Um, you know, we, I've always felt as an evangelist, and I tell every young evangelist launching out, you've got to be part of a local church. I'm concerned when people are not part of a local church. There's a lot of people say, we don't need a local church. We can just worship Jesus on our own. Yeah, okay, but, you know, the moment this happened, I mean, um, I had only been in emergency here in Naples for a few minutes, and I was surrounded, the bed was surrounded by my friends from this church, pastor and some of the young men of God that we're so connected with, um, to come and pray with me and stand with me. And the entire time we here, we were covered. We were, it was overwhelming. Um, pastor Greg, I think the first day, brought uh, Michael in with his guitar. We had a worship service. We had church there. And it was just phenomenal. And I told every doctor, I said, you're, you're giving me great care. You're doing amazing. But I've got an army of people praying. We, got, we heard from people all over the world. But this local church really supported us. And when the insurance company decided they didn't want to keep paying, they sent a plane down and flew us back to Ottawa. I, we were met by our pastors in Ottawa and uh, from the church that we're connected with there and, and uh, serve in, in um, 
They, they were there in the church there, did the same thing. And I, we said afterwards, what do people do, first of all, without God when they go through things, but secondly, without a family, without the covering, without the body. We never felt alone. We, never, we always felt. So thank you. Thank you, Destiny. It's amazing. This series that Pastor Greg is leading us through, and um, I try to watch every Sunday service. I, uh, at some point, either later on Sunday or the next day or whatever, and it's phenomenal. It's very unique. You might not realize this. You might think that because you're here, this is normal. Um, this is really not normal. Most churches, they um, never really share what they believe and why they believe it. People, many don't know what they believe. And if they do know what they believe, they don't know why they believe it. And without a foundation, without a doctrinal, biblical foundation, you're really in trouble. You have no absolutes. You have no absolutes. There's no right or wrong. People just do whatever and, you know, and that's the problem out there in the world. But this, this gives you grounding and this will help you and this will um, strengthen you. And today, of course, it's uh, healing in the laying on of hands. I believe with all my heart that God's healing you right now. I believe many of you are going to get healed. The atmosphere is charged with healing anointing. Healing angels have been released in this house. Holy Spirit is walking up and down the aisles, touching people and just doing it. And, and then last night's service to this morning's service, nine o'clock, uh, people just got healed sitting there, just being in his presence, because he's, he's an amazing, amazing God. I believe America is on the verge of seeing the greatest revival in the history of the world. I believe that something is going to happen very, very soon that is going to have millions swept in the kingdom of God. I honestly believe that things are not going to get worse. They're going to get worse out there, but in the kingdom, it's going to get better and better and better, because in the last days, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon all flesh. And when Holy Spirit is poured out upon all flesh, if they're sick, they're healed. If they're empty, they're filled. If they're lost, they're saved. It just happens that way. And he didn't say it's dependent on anything. He said, I will. And when God says, I will, you might as well not discuss it. It's done. And we live in this hour when that move is beginning to happen. But it has to be, the revival has to be a healing revival. Because you see, we, 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 we've, we've tried to convert people. We've tried to change them by talking to them, by going through stuff with them, by programs, by everything. And I don't know whether you notice, the majority of people haven't believed it. They haven't believed it. Because, you know, we tell them, well, Jesus is alive. Really? And he's the same today as he was yesterday. Really? Well, then they ask, why aren't the same things happening? Jesus said, after the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you're going to be my witnesses. If you go in a court of law and you give your testimony, you can give, you know, with it as much passion as you want. When you finish your testimony, the question is asked, what evidence do you have? What evidence do you have that what you're telling us is the truth? And people out there have every right to say, what evidence do you have that Jesus is alive? When John the Baptist was in prison, he sent two of his disciples to see Jesus. And in Matthew 11, they came and they said, look, you know, he's in prison. He's going to have his head cut off, but he needs to know, are you the one? Are you really the one? People are asking, is he really the one? A lot of people are saying, well, you know, you've got your religion, we've got our religion. There's a difference between Christianity and every other religion in the world because our leader, our founder, is not in the grave. He's not dead. He's alive. He's sitting on the throne, and he's interceding and praying for you this very moment. So... Jesus could have gone through the Old Testament and said, okay, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you from the Old Testament every prophecy about the Messiah and show you how I've been fulfilling them. And that would have been great. And maybe, maybe it would have convinced them. But what they would have had was information and knowledge. And as important as doctrine is, as important as good information is and knowledge, as long as it's in your head, it won't change you. And it won't change anybody else. It won't transform you. And it's only transformed people that will transform the city. 
They carry that transformation anointing. And so the truth has to move from your head to your heart because the problem many places in America is you tell them things and they say, oh yeah, I know that, I know that, I've already heard that, I know that. But when it moves from your head to your heart, it ignites you, the passion comes, the life comes, and it motivates you and it totally changes you. And so Jesus didn't give them information. He said, sit down and watch. And then you go back and you tell John what you've just seen. Tell him that the blind are seeing. Tell him the blind are seeing. Tell him the lame are walking. Tell him the lepers being cleansed. Tell him the good news is being preached. Before. And, oh, tell him the dead are being raised. And if you tell him that, he'll figure it out. Let me tell you something, folks. When people in Naples see wheelchairs empty, cancer tumors disappearing, the dead being raised through your hands. You won't have to preach. You won't have to teach. They'll say, I want to know Jesus. The plan is for an army of healing evangelists to be raised up. You see, in our day, we say, well, that person is a healing ministry. Book of Acts, everybody had a healing ministry. Didn't matter what they were doing, people got healed. They were serving tables and people got healed. Walking down the street, people got healed. And you see, you could bring, you could bring every healing evangelist to Naples, fill the largest auditoriums, have great meeting, have, you know, people get healed, people get saved. The day after, Naples is exactly the same. That doesn't change the culture. What changes the culture is people of God as an army going out to school, out to work, out to the highways and byways, out to the restaurants, carrying healing anointing and touching people because, you know, the laying on of hands, Jesus said it's a sign of a believer. So a sign of a believer is you will speak in tongues. You will speak in new tongues. And a sign of a believer is you will lay hands on people and they will be healed. You don't have to be religious about it. You just have to touch people. This anointing is highly contagious. And that's why it's going to be difficult for you not to receive something today because this place is just charged with healing anointing. Philip, in Acts chapter 8, went up to Samaria. He was sent there, actually, to get rid of him out of Jerusalem. And so he went out in the streets and preached. Now, Samaria was as ungodly as you could get. I mean, they didn't, they didn't believe in God. They, they, they had their own gods. They, they didn't like the Jewish people. They had everything going against them. And so the Jews and the Samaritans really didn't get along. But he's up there. So what did he do? He just went out and preached. And really, that means he bragged about Jesus. And an entire city was filled with joy. And you say, well, boy, he must have been a great preacher. The Bible says they believed his message because of the miracles. And then it describes what they saw. They saw notable miracles happening. If God can do that in, in Samaria over 2,000 years ago, don't tell me that he can't do it in Naples today through ordinary people who will just go and brag about Jesus and carry healing anointing. I was in England uh, years ago preaching when... Uh, George W. Bush was the president here, and Tony Blair was the prime minister over there, and they were looking for m weapons of mass destruction in uh, Iraq. And uh, so I said in a meeting, I said, if anybody's got connections and can get to your prime minister, tell them we found them. We found the weapons of mass destruction. The hands of the believers are to be ha weapons of mass destruction to cause havoc to the kingdom of darkness. And, um, and so we believe it. And God's going to anoint your hands today. And then you're going to go home and touch people. You don't be religious about it. You know, some of you got sons, daughters, relatives that uh, they're not into any of this. And if you go and <laughs> religious and say, well, thus said the Lord, I just came from the house of God and I've been anointed and I'm going to lay. They won't want you to touch them. So you just go and just love on them. How are you doing? And you're rubbing anointing all over them and healing anointing. And so it's not only God's will for you to be healed, but it's God's will for you to carry healing anointing and get today the passion and the boldness of the evangelist. 
it, you know, it is God's will to heal you. You see, the problem here is, and, and this goes for most things that people believe, they, they don't really believe the Bible. I, I, I've noticed that Christians in Canada, you know, they're, they're saying things and they're feeling strongly about things, whether it's the lifestyle of people or, or things like birth and death and life and all of those things, and their, their belief has nothing to do, even though they say they love Jesus, nothing to do with the Bible. It's just, well, they've read something, they've heard something, somebody's talked to them, they've been convinced about it. And, you know, one person said to me, I'm just in love with Jesus, but I, I, I'm not into the Bible. That's, that's totally impossible. He is the Word. If you fall in love with Jesus, you fall in love with his word, let me tell you. And you just get a hunger for it. And then you say, well, I fell in love with Jesus. I don't have... You get filled with the Holy Ghost and you get such a hunger for the word and it comes to life for you. Because what a plan to have the author of the book sitting with you, living inside you, when you read his book that he wrote, explaining and showing you things that you've never seen before. And so... It is God's will to heal. That's not something nice. That's the Bible. David in Psalm 103 says, you know, there are benefits of being part of the kingdom. And one of the benefits is he forgives all our iniquities. That's pretty good. And he heals all our diseases. All means all. No matter what disease, no matter what name, no matter what they say you've got, he heals all. And in the New Testament, James says, is there anybody sick? them call for the elders and let them pray the prayer of faith and the prayer of faith will will raise them up and the Lord makes them whole let me tell you something if it's God's will to heal anybody it's God's will to heal you he heals the believer out of a covenant he made that you read in Exodus he re heals the unbeliever just out of his absolute mercy. The best teaching that I could find on healing to give you is John chapter 10, verse 10. The teacher is Jesus, and he's explaining. Because some people say, well, you know, God made me sick. God gave me this pain. God gave me this situation to teach me. Or, Holy Spirit's our teacher, not pain. Holy Spirit's teacher, not, not, not a disease. Not pain. So Jesus said in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I've come that you might have life and that you might have abundantly. I actually like the Amplified. It says, I came that you may have and enjoy life to the full in abundance till it overflows. You need to have <laughs> so much that it just spills over on everybody else. That's different than a lot of Christians' testimony, but that's exactly what God's got for you. So, so it makes it simple. Is this God or is this the devil? Jesus said if it steals, if it kills, if it destroys, it doesn't come from me. It comes from the pit of hell. Sickness and disease, pain, limitation, steals. It kills. It destroys. And that's why we can send it back to the pit of hell. That's where it comes from. Jesus said, if you've if you're, if you're got a mountain in your life, I notice that a lot of people, when they pray for somebody for healing, they, um, they take a long time because they don't know what to do when they finish, so they just go on and on. It's really awkward. And then usually when they finish, they amen, and they pat and run. And uh, rather than saying, my wife, my wife gets everybody, you check it, you check, ask them, ask them, you know. And... Um, um, but what they normally do when they pray is give God a medical report. By the way, God already knows. God knows everything. He knows all this. But, okay, God, this person has this. The doctor said this. The doctors have done this. They, they're talking about this and this condition and this condition. And they go through it. And what you're doing, first of all, you're focusing in on the works of the enemy. And secondly, you're sapping the faith. 
You're sapping the faith out of that person and out of yourself. Smith Wigglesworth, a great healing evangelist in England years ago, said you'll never pray the prayer of faith if you're focusing in on the problem. It's not, it's not ignoring the facts, but there's one fact that, that overrides every other fact, that the tomb is empty, that Jesus is alive. That's a fact. That's a fact, that he's sitting on the right hand and that he is a healer. He is a healer. And, and so Jesus said, if there's a mountain in your life, speak to the mountain. Don't talk to God about the mountain. Talk to the mountain about God. Don't talk to God about the disease. Talk to the disease about God. That's what David did when he went before Goliath. Everybody was crying out, intimidated and crying out to God about how big the giant was. He went out to the giant and told him how big God was. And this day you're going down and I decree over you and your life and your situation and the, and the physical problems you may be having, that this day it's going down in Jesus. Because we're going to speak. We're going to speak to mountains. We're going to speak to arthritis. You don't even have to be nice. Arthritis, go back to hell. Cancer, go back to hell. Pain, go back. That's where it comes from. Absolutely. You say, but, you know, not, not everybody's healed. Well, in fact, and then you, people ask me, well, why isn't this person healed? Well, I've got a great answer for that. I don't know. I don't know. I, I was in a service in northern Ontario, the province that we live in, Canada, and uh, it was amazing. A lot of, lot of uh, Native people were there, and the place was full, and people were getting healed, and it was great. And in the midst of the service, a man bolts up from the seat, runs up on the platform, and runs right toward me. And he was, he was a French-Canadian man speaking English with broken accent, and, and um, uh, he was angry. He wasn't, he wasn't coming for healing. I think he was coming to hurt me. And he, he was angry because he was angry because other people were being healed. And he wasn't. And he ripped his shirt, literally ripped his shirt open. And you saw this. I mean, it was awful. It was like lumps and stuff and growth. And he said, the doctor said it was cancer. And I, I honestly... I had no faith to, to him. What I was praying, I was praying, but I was praying for me. God, don't let him hurt me. Don't let him kill me. I'm not a brave man. And, and he's, he's angry. And I stood there about this far from the guy and watched every growth, every lump disappear. Bam. Just like that. And we had a great service, let me tell you. I just said, if you want to give your life to Jesus, come. And they came. I mean, it was phenomenal. At the same time, my mother... Saint of God, that I love so much, I was so close to. I don't know whether you've ever seen the program, Everybody Loves Raymond, but uh, I have two brothers, but I was Raymond, and my mom was Raymond's mom, and my mom loved me more than my brothers, and I totally got it. I totally understood. I thought, why wouldn't she? I mean, really. And, and, and she, she loved the ministry. She prayed for me. She prayed for every service. She wouldn't stop until I phoned after the service and, and told her it was over, and then she wanted to know every word about it, you know. And um, she's in the hospital, diagnosed with cancer. And um, the doctor didn't give any hope. And you better believe we prayed. We got a call from Tulsa that Oral Roberts was in the prayer tower praying specifically for my mom. And um, uh, Benny Hinn lived in Toronto at the time. And he came through the room and we laid hands together on my mom. And uh, everybody was praying. And nine months after my mom uh, was diagnosed, she died. The interesting thing is, all those nine months or, you know, the time she was in the hospital, everybody that came in the bed beside her either got healed or saved. In her weakened condition, in her pain, she would, she would make them help her get her arm out to touch the person and pray for them, and they'd get healed. And so you knew, like you knew God was there. And, and um, so at her funeral, at the graveside, a friend of mine was there and came and hugged me. He said, Bill, don't quit. Don't quit. Don't give up. Well, I had never considered that, and I didn't know that that was an option. I didn't think it was. But I said, well, I'm not going to quit. But times like that, you really have to be honest. You really have to be honest. I stood at the grave of my mom, and I had to talk to God. 
And I said, I don't understand this. Because you see, if you get healing all figured out, then you've got God all figured out. And his ways are higher than our ways. Now, traveling as I have for pretty well all our ministry, you meet a lot of interesting people. And I meet some people who they've got everything figured out. They've got, every, they've got answers to questions nobody's ever asked. They, they, it's like they know everything, and they really make me nervous because the Bible says his ways are higher than ours, above our understanding. And when you don't understand, then you trust. You just trust, and that's what faith is. I don't get this, but I trust you. And I stood at the grave, and I did, I think, the smartest thing. Ever, well, the smartest thing I ever did was give my life to Jesus. The next smartest thing was Mary Gwen. And then probably the third smartest thing I ever did was stand at the grave. And I said, I'm going, making a decision today. Because if I was doing this, I would have done it different. I would have healed my mom. And I, this, this guy who was healed in the meetings in Timmins, Ontario, I probably wouldn't have healed him. He wasn't a Christian. He was a bad person. And I'm, I, it's a good job I'm not God. And it's a good job you're not God. And I, I said, um, I don't understand this. If I was doing it, I'd do it all different. But I've seen too many people, when something like this happens, particularly in the area of healing, they stop. They quit. They say, I can't, I can't, do, I can't pray. I can't go to church. I can't minister. I can't, I can't do anything until I get this figured out. I've got to have answers. And the problem with that is there are no answers for some of these questions. Oral Roberts told us when his wife died, somebody said, did you ever ask why? She died five years before him. Evelyn had fallen in the home and taken the hospital and was dead on arrival. And um, he said, I've never asked God why about anything. Because the fact is, when you ask God why, he goes silent. Just trust me. Just trust me. So I said, rather than spending the rest of my life dwelling on what I do not understand, I'll spend the rest of my life dwelling on what I do understand. And there's very few things I really understand, but I do understand this, that we've got a good, good father, that he does hear, that he does answer prayer, that he does heal, that, that he is a miracle work in God, and he does all things right, that he's never made a mistake, and somehow I understand that all things work together for good, whether I get it or not, whether it looks like it or not, and... That makes life so simple. So I challenge you to do that. And, um, you know, let me just close with this. Then we're going to just minister to you. But God's already ministering to you, so it's kind of redundant. But we'll do something anyway. Um, you get a letter from a lawyer saying that your Uncle Harry died and left you a million dollars. Now, you didn't know you had an Uncle Harry, but all of a sudden, you loved the guy. <laughs> Uncle Harry, he's died, really? Million dollars. <laughs> you, you grieve for a moment. Weeping only endures for a season. You know, it's gone. I'm over, I'm over that. I'm fine. <laughs> and, and so then you get nothing. You don't hear anything. Not another letter, no money. And so what do you do? You say, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to get it. Would have been nice, you know, promised it. But no. People get a copy of the will. And if needs be, they go to court. And they will take the will. And they'll hold it up. And they'll say, I'm not here begging. I'm not here to take somebody else's stuff. I'm here for my inheritance. I've got a copy of the will, and it says Uncle Harry left me a million dollars, and I'm here to collect. I don't want part of it. I don't want a little bit. I want it all. It's mine. Yeah. Folks, we've got a copy of the will. Yeah. Like, we've got a copy of the will. You better read the will. Because it's from God to you. And it's amazing what he's left us. 
I mean, there's peace, there's life, there's health, there's joy, and there's healing. It's all in the will. And so your attitude, if you're attacked, and everybody will be attacked sometime, is either, oh boy, I knew I was going to get it. I knew I was going to get it. It's going around, you know. Everybody's getting it. Well, at my age, you got to expect that, you know, I'll do this or that. Are you kidding? Well, it's in my family. My mom had it. My grandmother had it. Now I've got it, and our kids will probably get it, and they accept it. They just accept it. In fact, many times we expect sickness. If you hear that a, a friend has died and somebody tells you, well, you know, they died, the question normally is, what did they die of? Was it their heart? Was it cancer? Were they sick long? What about, what about dying healthy? Now, some of you are looking at What? <laughs> Actually, I believe it's possible. Not only is it possible to be healed, but it's possible to stay healed. In Exodus, you read that he gives a covenant that he says, if you obey the rules, I'll keep you well. I'll keep you healthy. So, if you're attacked and you will be, what do you do? It's an attitude. You say, really? Really? No, no. This isn't mine. I'm not. Uh, Jesus paid too much. Jesus absolutely paid too much for me not to receive healing. So you declare war on the enemy. And you might say, well, I tried that and it didn't, ha- it didn't work. Well, you don't stop until you win. I mean, in the natural, you know, you don't, you don't ask George W. Bush. You don't just go in and drop a couple of bo- bombs and say, whoops, I didn't mean that. Uh, let's, let's change it. We changed our mind. You're committed. If it's worth asking for, you keep asking till you receive. You keep knocking till it's open. You keep seeking till it's finding. And you never give up because you just know it's in the will and it's your inheritance. And God is accountable to his word. He said, if we lay hands on the sick, the sick recover. He said, if any two agree is touching anything on earth, it shall be done. We believe the word and we remind God that this isn't something just for some people. It's a promise and it's in the will for us. Hallelujah. And by the way, I mean, you say, well, I've never heard of that. Well, I have. Moses was 120 years old. He didn't even need glasses. His eyes weren't dim. He climbed a mountain at 120 and just never came back. Enoch wasn't sick. He went for a walk and never came back. I mean, if God can do it for them, he can do it for us. He loves us as much as them. It's in the will. I mean, here we are in this great day. And so today is your day. Today's your day. Some of you have been saying, God, when, when, when? I believe heaven's saying now, now, now. In fact, before this service, I felt that there was just a lot of excitement in heaven about you coming, about you being here, because I honestly believe this is a divine appointment. You might have said, well, I didn't even know I was coming until what God did. You said, well, you know... um, I don't even know why I'm here. Well, God does. This is a divine appointment. He knew before the foundations of the earth that you'd be here, I'd be here, we'd be in here, and he'd planned something amazing for you. There's such an anointing for healing in this house. Would you stand with me right now, please? And if it's possible, take your hand and place in the area of your body where you need healing. If you've got pain, put your hand where the pain is. If you have limitation somewhere, put your hand there. If, if you've got problems all over your body, put your hand on top of your head. Wherever you put your hand, leave it. Just leave it there. Because I believe there's a nail-scarred hand on top of your hand. And in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I speak healing to flow right now. It's raining in this house and there's, it's healing rain, but there's fire. There's fire in the rain. Receive right now. This is your time of receiving in Jesus' name. Somebody, your spine was messed up because of an accident. 
God's healing that spine right now. It's actually straightening. God's healing bones. We speak to every bone, every muscle, every nerve to come into order. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Give you praise. There's a kidney infection that's being healed this morning. You came with that problem. It was causing discomfort, pain. Check it right now. It's gone. Someone towards the back of the auditorium, you're feeling heat going through your body. That's just the fire of God. It's real. It's real. And he's healing you. Check it right now. Pain, I command you to go. Disease, I command you. There's someone, you have a lump, a growth on your side. Put your hand there, and you'll find that it's not there. Someone else, it was on the neck. There's also a hernia. You came with a hernia. If you can check it, you'll find out that healing is taking place right now. From the front of this auditorium to the back, from one side to the other, anointing is here. Arthritis is being healed. Cancer is being healed. That migraine headache is being healed. That I don't, I don't know what it is. It's, it's the neck problem that causes... It, you can't move your neck. You can't look up. You can't turn, you know, to check behind you. He said that was the way it was. But move your neck right now. God's just healed those bones in the back of your neck. It seems like God's recreating some things in people. And, and that which the doctors have said you'd always have, that's what's being healed right now. Chronic conditions are being healed. Because when they said there's nothing that can be done, that means there's nothing they can do. But they forgot about Jesus. So healing is flowing through you right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is what I want you to do. And let me just explain before I ask you to do it. If you came with a physical problem, I'm going to ask you to check it. If you were limited, move. If you had pain, press, do whatever. We never get concerned about what has not happened. Because some people say, well, yeah, something's happening, but I've still got this and this. We always get excited. If there's any indication anything's happening, get excited because God never starts something he doesn't intend to finish. And many times it's when, you know, it starts and people say, I'm going to give God praise for at least what's starting. When they give praise for that, it just, the rest is gone. Check it, would you please, right now. Whatever it is, check it. You got nothing to lose, move. Move that hand, move that elbow, move that leg. Someone's hip is being healed right now. Just as I speak, a hip is just being healed. Wow. That's big. I don't know if you felt something or not. It just it was like wham, somebody's hip. You came with a hip problem and you just got healed. Where where is that person? Where's that person you came? Is it is it you? And it's you. What what was the problem? And what's happened today? Is, was there pain? Okay. Over here, sir. What's that? How does it feel right now? It's so good. That's so good. That's so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> So this is what we want to do real quick because, um, well, it's too late to beat the Baptist for lunch. And, of course, you never do that anyway. So, <laughs> so um, um, check it one more time. If you came with any kind of physical problem, you can check. And everyone that says something, something seems to be beginning to happen in my body, something seems to be beginning to happen in my body, just wave your hands right now. Wave your hands right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Every one of you with your hands raised, just come. Come. Just come front real quick. Real quick. We're just going to thank God. And as they do, as they're coming, because these are people that are being healed, physically healed. The most important. Yeah, yeah, look. Yeah. Look, 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 look. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Somebody right back here, God's healed you. All the pain, limitations gone. You need, to, you need to be here. You need to give God praise. Amen. And somebody, you have arthritis, serious arthritis, and it's being healed. You need to come and give God praise too. It's, these people are just glorifying God by being here. But the most important miracle is salvation. So right now, just for a moment, I want everybody to bow their head and say, Jesus, right now, just touch people's lives. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus or you have but you slid back, you can get to heaven with a sick body. You don't have to, but you can. But you can't get there with a sick soul. And Jesus wants people whole, body, spirit, and soul. So if you're here and you're not right with God, are you, are you where but you're not now? You say, I, I need to get right with God. I need a spiritual miracle. I just want to agree with you in prayer. Just slip your hands up right now if you say, I need a spiritual miracle. I need to get right with God. Yes, 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 yes. God bless you. Father, you see every hand, and we come into agreement with them right now, and we thank you, God, for what you've done, for what you're doing, what you're going to do, give them the power to live for you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Can I get a microphone just for a minute, please? Uh, congregation may be seated. You stay right here at the front for a moment. Just going to try to uh, get two or three people here, and then going to pray collectively. But uh, something happened to you, sir? I had a little back pain in my uh, L4 and 5 when I came in here. It was still very painful. And it was, right now, I don't have any pain. Where do you suppose, where do you suppose the pain went? Went to hell. It went, tell him again, where did it go? Went to hell. The pain went to hell. Glory to God. I, I like that. I like, what about you, sir? Uh, pain in my neck. I couldn't turn but about this far, but now I can go. Look, at, look up. How long have you had that? Forever. Forever? That's a long time. <laughs> at least 20 years. Well, at least 20 years, and God just healed. That's amazing. What about you? Neck pain. Move. And? Good. Good. It's gone. Good. You got, gone to? It's gone to hell. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that great to be just to be able to say it? Yeah. 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 What about you? Me, I have um, something in my head moving round and round, but now I don't know. I think I feel still feeling it. Your, your head's been healed. I would like it to. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What about you, sir? Heart disease runs in our family. I've had a few problems. The great thing is you're part of a new family now. you got royal blood going through your veins. Your father, so. you inherit from your father. Do you have pain limitation? Does any feeling? No. no Thank you, Lord, for totally healing. New heart, new heart. What about you, sir? My uh, uh, back pain, I injured my back a couple weeks ago. And what happened today? Um, I, don't, I don't feel any pain. <laughs> what about you? Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder. What? Post-traumatic stress disorder. And? Yeah, peace of mind. God's doing it, isn't he? You feel good. You yes, feel good. What about, what about you? I had an ACL surgery. What? I tore my ACL during a soccer game, and my muscle has been depleted, and it's gone, but I feel the muscle moving back, and it's great. You actually feel muscles moving. Glory to God. <laughs> Slip your hands up and say, thank you, thank you. Let's have two more. Can we do two more? Well, why, why this nice lady here, what, what's happening? Well, I have Addison's, which is an adrenal disorder, and I just believe that God's healing it, that I'm getting strength and energy back. What do, you, do you feel anything right now? Do you? Not at the moment, but I believe God will. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. What about you? Uh, my shoulder, among other things. I know I'm healed. I know I'm supposed to be here. Move it. I did. That's why I'm here. <laughs> and, doesn't, and, and doesn't did you have pain all. other places? No, no, no but, other things. Things it's, it's gone. that yeah. are going Thank back you. to Thank hell. You. That's right. Come on. Back what about you? I have a shifty clavicle that's going away. Thank you, Jesus. What about you? You look happy. Pneumonia. Gone. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, thank you for every, every one of these people. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. You may return to your seats. You've all given God glory. I mean, we could spend a long time here and listen, but these people are being healed. The power of God. If you need healing... It's not over yet. I want everyone standing, please. And I want you to raise your hands because I want to pray for you, not just for healing, but I want to pray for you that you will receive fresh fire of God, that you will become a carrier. You know, 
in a negative way, if you come in contact with somebody with a contagious disease, I mean, you can be with them and say, well, I didn't get anything, I feel fine. And the day after, you think, oh, I got it. <laughs> well, this is, that's bad, but this is good. This is good, because you're going to come in contact with a contagious anointing, and even you that say, well, I didn't receive anything, you're going to be shocked, because, you know, when somebody has a contagious disease, you can track their, their steps. You can map it out. There's an outbreak here. There's an outbreak here. I prophesy that you're going to receive, and there's going to be an outbreak of the Holy Ghost and fire and miracles wherever you go, and we should be able to trace it back to little or you. So slip your hands up right now. Father, I pray these hands will be anointed with the fire of God. I pray for the anointing of healing, the passion and the boldness of the Holy Ghost to come upon you. <clears throat> and from the front to the back, I speak healing and breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You receive and thank God for it and go.